We come from the U.S. We've been separated from our names. And we actually are doing this trip because most of us have either been in cages because of the criminal justice system, or we actually fight to free people in the U.S. And, and this kind of work, coming back, finding our heritage, seeing the sites, and actually reconnecting with our names, it provides some healing, and it also lets us extend the fight. So we're... I want to say a very big shout out to um, these people who are part of my Patreon fans. Yes, yeah, so Patreon is an online platform that gives you the opportunity to support the work that I'm doing, like bringing you this, making videos, getting gadgets and everything. So I want to say a big shout out to Jamaican sister Robinson, to Lisa Louise, Frank Collins. You just came to Ghana two days ago. I'll be meeting you in Cape Coast very soon. Judy Jones. Judy Jones, how are you doing? Melisent Boatin, you are in Canada. Shout out to you and your husband, Nana. You bought me my camera, the one I'm using now, and the drone. Thank you very much. Lastan Forbes, thank you very much for being part of my patron. And then Kevin Edwards, Kevin Edwards. So if you're watching this video and you would like to support Echo Simpson every month with maybe a dollar or two dollars, it will be much appreciated. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hey, what's good, everybody? Thank you very much for checking me. It's a beautiful month. We started November in, in a beautiful way because a lot of beautiful things are happening. I love the fact that the African diaspora community and the Africans in the motherland community have started some kind of conversation. Yes, and I love the conversation that is going on. I'm in a certain group and we are all learning. You know, there was this question that, uh, this video that is trending that says that some of the African diaspora who are coming to the motherland must at least try to learn one or two basic words in either Chi or Fanti. I speak Fanti, but most people in Ghana do understand and can speak Chi better than the other languages. But hey, we are all trying to, you know, Put the languages out there, whichever suits you that you think would be easy for you to learn, you go ahead and learn it. So the question is, do you think traveling to Africa demands you to at least learn the basic languages or the basic instructions or commands when it comes to using a certain language here in Ghana to be specific? So when it comes to Cape Coast, if you want to reside in Cape Coast, then you may be looking at learning the Fante language. Or if you want to stay outside Cape Coast or Central Region, you may want to learn the Chi language. But everything, everything that happens, you're still learning the language. And that is part of the process of you repatriating to Ghana. Yes, that is part of the process. There are other things that we do that includes, okay, that makes the process complete. There are so many times that I've made a video to show you certain African-Americans or African diaspora people who are given a certain position in certain families. Yes, even the layman in his family, if he does something good, something that is uh, must be applauded, we applaud that person together with a certain privilege that the person may have to get. That is why you see a lot of African diasporans getting these uh, privileges in certain clans or families here in Ghana. There are a couple of times that we've had African diasporas coming to help with water project, with housing project, with electricity project. And sometimes certain communities would have to say thank you. And in way of doing that, they can't give you money back but they have to give you certain privileges 
that will make your stay a better one. That leads to our video that we're going to watch today when brothers and sisters from the diaspora, from the U.S. to be specific, came over to Ghana. They had their naming ceremony, which is also one of the process of healing. And then one brother who has been to Ghana a couple of times, and he's been a great support to a certain community here in Cape Coast or in the central region, was also installed with a certain privilege. Maybe I don't want to say he was installed as a chief, because mostly when we use that statement, people think that, okay, we mean a chief, like a big chief, a paramount chief. No. Anybody, anybody that works closer to the chief the paramount chief of a certain community is also called chief sometimes yes even though they may not be the main chiefs or you may call it like a sub chief or a, a leader of of a group inside the community so this brother was also given that privilege to be very closer to the chiefs and the people of Mori as part of the youth section of the community. So we call that in Brentian. So in Brentian is like when you take all the youth in the community, the, the, the there are certain people who, who are like the overseers of the youth. So he has been given that privilege to be a part. He's not the main one to be a part of that community or the youthful community. So in reaction to him being installed as a chief or as part of the Mbrantehin group. Uh, the chief also made mention that he is expected to be there for the community anytime they need him. Uh, one thing that the chief said that really touched my heart was when he said, we don't need the money. We with their pen, we fight with their mind. <coughs> but we are expecting and up this afternoon to bring all this ingenuity, to bring this resources, to come fight poverty, to come fight ignorance, to come fight Green, corruption, to come, you know. But we need your skills. It is the skills that will help elevate the community. It is not about pumping in money, pumping in money, no. So he made mention that we are looking forward with you being an African-American, one of the most educated persons in the world. He mentioned that is the African-Americans. You've been there to learn the ways of the European and your route is from Africa. So then... Uh, you must be the most educated one here in this world. So if you're an African-American or an African diaspora, be proud of yourself that you're one of the most educated people in this world. Yes. So, hey, this is what really happened. I wanted to bring it to your notice and know that in part of the healing process, a lot of things will go down. And these are some of the things. The naming ceremony, installing brothers and sisters as queen mothers or chiefs, giving them other privileges just like the common Ghanaian and other things. So thank you very much for checking me out. Put up a comment, share this video, and let's make sure that the repatriation process goes down very well for all of us. Thank you and have a beautiful day.